What is the relationship between the arts and real life? As a child, we spend a lot of time engaging with stories and games. Later on, we often see this as the insignificant, immature part of our lives. But actually, it's when we do a lot of our learning about what the real world entails as an important part of our development. As an adult, we come to develop so-called real world problems. We take on serious things that we have to deal with. As an example, perhaps you were thinking of studying something creative at uni, but then your parents told you to study a serious subject so that you could get a real job when you graduate. The arts are presented as an extra, a bonus if you have time, but otherwise they are a distraction from what truly matters. I want to question whether this is true and look at the relationship between the arts and real life. It was Alfred Hitchcock who said that drama is life with the dull bits cut out. And today I want to riff on that quote. What we do in the arts is take material from life and put it in this arbitrary format, whether that's writing it down in the story, putting it on a stage, or putting it in front of a film camera. We strip away the noise of everyday routine and focus on the exact emotions or experiences we are interested in. In this sense, the arts operate in a similar way to a scientific experiment. In the world, there is a limitless set of variables that you could pay attention to. In science, we isolate two and see the effects that they have on each other. What we are looking for is a pattern. While science discovers the patterns of the physical world, the arts uncover the patterns of the emotional or the spiritual world. We take an important thread of life and investigate it. Let me give you an example to illustrate what I'm talking about. I hope you're familiar with the great musical, The Phantom of the Opera. It was before that a fantastic novel by Gustave Leroux. There is one line from that novel that exemplifies the Phantom's character and situation and serves as the line of best fit, if you will, throughout the entire story. He had a heart that could contain the empire of the world, but in the end, he had to make do with a cave. What he is exploring here is a person of great talent who is not in a situation to fully realize their potential. The novel explores the consequences of this gap between someone with huge potential and what the real world will allow. On the one hand, it leads to an overwhelming desire for revenge or power or control. On the other hand, that desire produces beautiful works of music and the Phantom calls himself the Angel of Music. Back in the real world, you can take your understanding of the Phantom's pattern and use it as a driving force to find out what your true potential or calling is, as well as understand some of the darker temptations you may be prone to when feeling frustrated along the way to that goal. We understand an emotional pattern and use it to predict the world or to take action in the world, just like science operates. To me, that is real. Are the arts a distraction from the real world? The arts are real life distilled. Now I would like to share some tips for bringing the arts into your everyday life. First, put a poster on your wall. Find an image that exemplifies one of these patterns for the way you want to live and look at it every day. The second is to have a character as a reference point in your mind. Whenever you're unsure, you can ask yourself, what would that character do? And when you need a particular trait, you can have a character for that trait. So if you need courage, you go for character X. If you want to experience joy, you head for character Y. If you enjoyed this video, I've got plenty more. Please like, comment or subscribe. I'd be especially interested in hearing some of the patterns that you've found in literature or in other art form and how you've used that in your own life.